Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. At least 11 people injured in St. James Collision. At least two children are listed among the injured following a motor vehicle collision which occurred on the Lilliput Main Road in St. James. Firefighters reported that a Toyota Highest bus and a Toyota Mark X motor car had crashed that resulted in at least 11 individuals being transported to hospital for treatment. The report so far is that about 3 p.m., the bus was traveling in the direction of Montego Bay with passengers aboard, while the Mark X, which only the driver, was going in the opposite direction when the collision took place. The injured, which included the children, were taken to hospital through the efforts of ambulance personnel from the fire brigade, JDF personnel, and passerby who assisted. Their condition are currently unknown, but initially reports say that a number of injured were quite serious. 55-year-old shopkeeper gone down in Kingston 10. A 55-year-old shopkeeper woman was shot and killed in Kingston 10 on Friday evening. The disease has been identified as Faye. Reports are that Faye was at her shop, where she also resides, when unknown assailants pounced upon her at about 5.20 p.m. She was shot multiple times, including the head. The halfway three police were summoned and Faye was rushed to hospital where she was pronounced dead. Full-blown gang conflict as three die in no sites attack. As intra-gang warfare deepens in St. James, Assistant Commissioner of Police Clifford Chambers has admitted that it has been difficult to break criminal stronghold in a riddling war of attrition. That grim analysis came hours after a drive-by shooting in Rose Heights, St. James, in which three persons were killed and two others hospitalized with injuries. To convict the gangs, we have to get evidence. To get the evidence, you have to get the statement. And to get the statement, you have to make people feel comfortable, Chambers said. The Euro 1 Chief of Police on Thursday emphasizing the difficulty in securing convictions. The deceased in Wednesday afternoon's attack our 27-year-old Chadwell Fraser, otherwise known as Bombrain, or Chad, of Felicity Road, Glendevon, Chamaria Clavin, a.k.a. Chippy24, of Balcon Road Heights, and Tony and Reed, a.k.a. Tufai, who resides in Jerry Terrains, all had St. James addresses. Police investigations pointed to an ongoing conflict of the Shabdan, Whitaker, Bushead, and Fredman gangs. We are not getting the statements to facilitate the evidence and to facilitate the anti-gang dream coming to fruition, the assistant commissioner said, frustration evident in his voice. Noting that he understood that residents were fearful, he acknowledged that the task was Herculean. Since the incident, the police have increased patrols and other measures to guard against reprisals in Salt Spring, Albion and Green Pond Chambers noted. The Rose Heights gunfire is believed have been a clash of rivals, with their attackers surprising the victims during a birthday party for one of the injured men. Cartridges recovered at the scene suggest that high powered rifles were used. Reports are that the group was on Mall Road when a silver Toyota Axio motor vehicle drove up. Masked men with rifles exited the car and opened fire. The incident occurred at 4.20 p.m. Reed was shot in the back and buttocks, Calvin in the head and tie, and Fraser in the upper body. Fraser was pronounced dead on arrival at Connor Regional Hospital, and Calvin and Reed succumbed to their injuries while undergoing treatment. Chambers is imploring citizens to call with information that could help to solve the crime. We just want anyone with information to feel free to call us. Information that can lead us to who are the persons who were involved, he appealed. A curfew has been imposed in the affected era for the next 48 hours. May Pen Firefighters Angry Over Shabby Station Complaining that the building's electrical system is not up to safety standards, there is no running water, and the station is infested with rats and termites, firefighters assigned to the May Pen Divisional Headquarters have warned that they cannot guarantee normal operations going forward. They all ask not to be identified by name out of fear of being suspended. The irony is, as officers, we do fire prevention and inspections, and these same things we are trying to prevent in other places are happening at our base, said one firefighter. He was referencing a recent fire at this station. It is not a simple electrical power surge because it caused a fire, 
while we were out on an emergency. If the one person who was at base wasn't on site, there would have been serious damage. The officer used a fire extinguisher to put it out. We have recorded the incident, but to date, nothing has been done about it, the firefighter said. The lack of running water is one of the biggest challenges. They told reporters as the nature of their jobs make it vital for them to be able to get rid of potentially harmful substances encountered in the field. The problem has persisted for three months, they said. We are exposed to certain contaminants on a daily basis and sometimes we come in contact with certain carcinogens that may cause issues to our health. So decontaminating is key, no matter what the job or the emergency was. That is the national standard, said one firefighter. Because we have no water, we have to use a sanitizer to rub our hands, and if something else happens, we have to go out again. This is on a daily basis. During the busy season, one firefighter may have to respond to up to about 10 calls within a 24-hour period, and you can't bathe or wash your hands, nothing, said the firefighter. Using the toilet is a challenge as it leaks effluent from the bees, and the bath outside under the darkness of night using a bucket of water from the fire truck. An overflowing manhole on the ground does not make that task any easier, the firefighter said. They told reporters that their complaints have fallen on deaf ears. We need all these issues to be addressed. We are first responders and our working conditions are poor. We are calling on senior management or the ministry to have these matters addressed. The unions visited and all the concerns were voiced and they basically told us to go back to work. At the end of the day, I will go out there to go fight the fire and respond to other emergencies. But we cannot guarantee normalcy going forward until our issues are resolved, one firefighter warned. Commanding officer in charge of the Mapin Fire Brigade, Superintendent Dennis Lyon, acknowledged that there was an issue with running water at the facility, but he attributed it to a parish-wide problem. Recognizing that there are frequent interruptions in the water supply, he said, three tanks were installed on the compound. One of the tanks is now out of use as it has a leak, but he asserted that he has put measures in place to ensure there is always water available at this station. There is a water tank at this station that is always filled, and I gave instructions that once the tank is empty, the tanker should be used to refill the 400-gallon water tank on the building, he said, adding that those instructions were being carried out. He explained that a new water pump is to be donated to this station by the Costos of Clarendon and that is expected to alleviate the water problem within a few days. In reference to the overflowing sewage at the facility, Lyon said this was caused by old sewer pipes that have collapsed. This issue, he said, was being addressed. We closed two bathrooms for two days and asked them to bear with us while the problem is being sorted out, he said, adding that the collapsed pipes have been excavated on May 20 and new ones will be installed. The commanding officer told reporters that a fluctuation in the JPS supply to the building has caused the fire and the issue had been resolved. He, however, denied claims of a rodent infestation at the facility. When I took over as divisional commander on June 1 last year, I received complaints that they were rodent infestation and that was corrected, he said. Yes, the building is infested with termites and we have brought in persons to deal with that, but they said the building is too old. The management of the brigade and the minister of local government are aware of this, he said, promising that the second stage of the rebuilding of Mapin Fire Station will begin in earnest in the shortest possible time. He added that the commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade will address a staff meeting at the Mapin Station on May 31st. Also, during that visit, the Costos will hand over the promised water pump to the fire station. Mackenzie hailed for a championing cause of homeless. A fitting name and a symbol of hope. That is how Prime Minister Andrew Holness described the Desmond Mackenzie Transitional Center for the Homeless on King Street in downtown Kingston as it was being officially opened on Friday. Ground was broken in November 2019 for the 140 million facility which can house 40 people. Holness said that in addition to the shelter, food and basic hygiene, critical services will be offered to residents including pediatric care, counseling, rehabilitation, occupational therapy, social reintegration, and medical treatment. The provision of medical treatment is particularly important 
as studies have shown that homeless populations in general are six times more likely than the house population to become ill or infected with diseases. It is anticipated that this facility will set an example of service excellence with regard to the improved care offerings to the poor and vulnerable wholeness said. Jamaica's homeless population is in excess of 2,000, with at least half of that number in the corporate era. Wholeness said that his administration views homelessness as a solvable problem and has built or expanded several drop-in centers across the island with the objective to have it a site in every parish. This is a substantial action on the part of the government to give through service to the homeless and the most vulnerable in the country. This is a government that truly cares. We don't talk about it, but we act in care, he said, adding that in the last financial year, more than 500,000 meals were provided for the homeless. The Prime Minister noted that Mackenzie, a former mayor of Kingston and current local government minister, has been a strong advocate for the poor and dispossessed throughout his career. The Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, passed a resolution on May 10 to name the building in honour of Mackenzie, who is also the Member of Parliament for Kingston Western. If I were of the view that the Minister was not deserving of it, and it came to my attention before it was approved, I would have stopped it, Holness said in response to concerns about the naming of public buildings after Ministers. The Centre is the brainchild of Mackenzie, who had the vision to transform an abandoned dental clinic from as early as 2008. I remember going into New Kingston in a dem that a lot of people were afraid to go to because of the stigma associated with those people and I went down into the gully and I fed them but when I reached home I was told to stop at the door. It is a journey that I am happy has manifested itself to the point where we can officially open this facility, Mackenzie said. The facility will better enable the municipal authority to manage homelessness in the corporate era and ease the burden on the Murray Atkins night shelter. In his remarks, Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams, who chairs the KSAMC, said that Mackenzie recently hosted a wellness day for the homeless, which is said to become an annual event. This is a day that we treat and fed the homeless. The doctors come in and treat them and look at the various medical issues including psychiatrists, dentists, and they are treated to entertainment and food, he detailed. Williams said that it was an honor for the KSAMC to name the building after Mackenzie. Phase 2 of the project will increase the capacity of the transitional center to 100. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.